welcome to that Taskmaster show. It's only episode two, so as things are still fresh and exciting, let's press on and enjoy it while it lasts. Your five champion candidates are Ian Sterling, <laughs> Joe Thomas, Lou Sanders, Paul Sinha, and Sean Gibson. And here, a man whose name you never hear before the words scrubs up well, <laughs> it's <laughs> a little Alex Horn. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Well, you wouldn't want me to because I've been going to the gym. <laughs> yep. Early days still, but it's tough because I, I want to use the machines and you know it says on them you've got to read all the instructions first. I've been going four months, still doing that. <laughs> still doing that. This is the rowing machine one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Five different languages. <laughs> this is the drink machine. Yep. Because you should, you should read them. You did plan this, and it's just, it's just, there's a fundamental difference between what Alex and I find funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to be outvoted, but you, you, to be outvoted, you'd need to laugh. See? <laughs> <laughs> On we go. Let's get the prize task happening, please. This week, we've asked them to bring in the best pair of things. The winner at the end of the episode will go home with not five, but ten whole things. That's a lot of things. Sean. Um, I've got a pair of um, Shirley Bassey's pop socks. <gasps> Real? Shut Seriously. Up. Seriously. I'm 98% sure they're hers. 98. <laughs> That's an interesting percentage. <laughs> the ones you brought in are there. Yeah. What, what's the 98%? Why are you almost sure they're Shirley Bassey's? So, I went to see a concert that Shirley Bassey was at. I went backstage past her dressing room, and um, she'd gone. She'd long gone. Uh, Went in. They were on the floor. Yeah. Don't know whose else they could be. Well, I did some research. I wrote to uh, Dame Shirley, but I got an email back from Dame Shirley Bassey's PA in Monaco. Lovely. Unfortunately, it's impossible to confirm. Yeah. So it would be most unusual that we would have a pair of pop socks in the dressing room, so my instinct is that they are not belonging to Dame Shirley. <laughs> well, whose are they? I think uh, you're lying. <laughs> Well, there we go. That's the first one. Who's next? Uh, yeah, Dame Joe Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> what pair of things did you bring in? I bought uh, a pair of diamond earrings. Here we go. Oh. There they are. What? There they are. As a prize, a pair yeah. of earrings is fairly route one. But if they're mm. sufficiently valuable, yeah. then well, uh, you could be looking at a yeah. pretty sweet position here. I hope so, because they are valuable. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how much were they? I think they were, they were, they were uh, 2,735. Okay. Well, I know for a fact that Alex knows how much they were. How much were they, Alex? Well, it says, uh, the description, weirdly, 100% brand new. <laughs> 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 so, so you know they're good. <laughs> High quality <clears throat> alloy. £2.21. That's for the pair. <laughs> well, that's rubbish. That's place. <laughs> um, Ian Sterling, can yes. you beat a rubbish pair of earrings? Hopefully. So when you said to pair, to me, I immediately thought double act. And who are the most famous double act on television? Uh, Malcolm and Wise. Dick and Dom, correct. <laughs> <laughs> End Bungalow, the great BAFTA award-winning television show. So yeah. I have got a song, if you will, from Dick and Dom to the winner of tonight's episode of Taskmaster. Yes, here, here it is. Well, you ran around and you did some tasks And you did whatever Greg Davis asked Ian Sterling called us to write this song So congratulations from Dick and Dom Oi, 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 oi Oi, 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 oi On the set of their new train station show <laughs> Dick and Dom's combined age is the same as a Dalai Lama. <laughs> Dom's wow. 21, Dick is 62. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. OK. Uh, Lou? I will wait to see it. OK. <laughs> so, it's a pair of breasts <laughs> on slippers. <laughs> What's nicer than slippers and breasts listening to music? <laughs> well, hello, you've got all three. OK. Right. Do they come with the radios? Is that... I just got an elastic band and just popped that round. <laughs> I just... You just added those radios, you said. <laughs> I did that. 
It's a lovely reminder of childhood. <laughs> Listening to crackly radio <laughs> while you snuggle up to your mum's feet tits. <laughs> Well, there's one person left. Do you want to move on to Paul? Yeah. Uh, this was a housewarming gift from my mum and dad who go on more holidays than I do because they had sort of invested well. <laughs> and in... Two... <laughs> <laughs> but in 2002, I bought my first home and they presented me with the most wonderful uh, housewarming gift that they picked up from their holiday to China. Here, here it is. <laughs> Lots of reasons to love your mum and dad. But the best reason is they cannot see anything in this picture that everybody else can see with their <laughs> I mean, it's a really disturbing picture. <laughs> I'm going to give some points out really okay. quickly. You ready? Yes. Surprise, surprise. One point for the super cheap earrings. I mean, Joe Thomas. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really love that panda picture. So I'm going to give Dick and Tom and the, the panda picture four points. Three points to Lou. And five points to Sean. Okay. Yeah, right, right, right. Because I believe they're Shirley Bass's pop socks. Right. Don't give me five points. Right, come on then. What's happening now? Uh, we've got a task, and sneakily, this one involves disguising a disguise. <laughs> Fancy. A clue, isn't it? Put something on your face that looks like a moustache from a long distance away. But when you get up close, you realise it's something completely different to what you thought. You have ten minutes to plan your moustache and ten further minutes to make your moustache. Most unexpected moustache wins. Your time starts now. Your time starts now. Um, I'll stop, I'll stop. Planning. I'll just plan here at the table. Do you understand the task? I do understand the task, yeah. You make a... <laughs> I think you want something with small detail. I'm channeling Father Christmas, so I want something white. Like a baby mouse. <laughs> I, don't want a I don't want a dead mouse on my face. But do you want a live mouse? No, I don't, face? don't. Scrap that. Hard to get away from ants. I mean, it's really. How many ants? Well, you know, 50, 50 really good ones. <laughs> Sometimes in my mind is not my friend. What were you thinking of this time, Lou? Pubes. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't put that in the show. Okay. Well, the way it's going to work is this, Greg. You're going to look at the moustache from a distance, and you have to guess what you think it actually is. OK. The most unexpected moustache wins. We're going to find out who is the Tash Master. Ready? <laughs> Man. <laughs> OK, let's go. OK, here's Lou and Ian first. Hmm. OK. Ian Stilling. Well, I, I can only tell you what I see, <laughs> and what I see is a, a small cut-out picture of a Vulcan bomber. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that Lou has cut out the, the mouth section of a teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> OK. We will now zoom in. Here we go. So fake flies, fake and flies, real mealworms. Real mealworms. Mm. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> and then we have Ian's. Yep. <laughs> so it's a map of a large village in Hampshire called Lip Hook. Lip Hook, because it's on his lip. Yep. And a little and a little picture of Ian as well. <laughs> That's me on the map. Mm. <laughs> 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 Yeah, go on, who's next? 
Oh, we well, could have discussed it, I bet. No, there was a pun. It's the lip hook things annoyed me. He... <laughs> OK, Greg, what do you think they've got on their upper lips? Hmm. Hmm. Joe, genuinely what I see is the novelty Doctor Who assistant, K9. <laughs> 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 For, young, yeah, for younger yeah. people, K9 was a really terrible robot dog. Yeah. And that's what I think it is. Uh, uh, OK. And nothing will change my life. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Sean, I think it is the headless body <laughs> of a toy cow, is what I think it is. <laughs> Jersey. OK, cow, cow carcass. Yeah. OK, well, here is the detail. It's something, isn't it? <laughs> it's something. It's a few moustaches. Mansell, Gooch, Selleck. I don't know, Jock. I quite like the fact that you've got lots of moustaches together and they're celebrity moustaches. It doesn't make me as angry as I, uh, okay. I thought it might. Uh, OK. <laughs> and Sean. Sean. <laughs> it's hair from a Barbie. It's Barbie hair and oh. Alex's face. OK. Are you pleased with that? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Should have written lip hook in the hair. <laughs> The most surprising moustache and moustache. I know. It, it's madness to think that you could possibly come below that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Order! Order! <laughs> and now for some adverts. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Taskmaster. Alex, what was going on just a few minutes ago? Well, before the break, we were feasting our eyes on the hairy upper lips of our patrons. Yes, they've been making moustaches that look like moustaches from a distance, but up close are something different altogether. Now it's time to see Paul Sinha! <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow. Pretty good. That, to me, looks like a magnificent moustache. <laughs> it can't be, because that's the game! It's not a moustache. <laughs> what would he do? What would the Sinnerman do? <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be, uh, in another language, the word moustache has got to mean something and it'll be that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to clue, he's absolutely stumped me. OK, this is what's going on on Paul's top lip. It's just an infection. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, it's, what is it, caviar? Yeah, sturgeon eggs. Fish eggs. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's a work of genius. Can I also point out that caviar is stuck to my lip with glue? And whenever it was falling off, I'd go, oh, that's delicious caviar, I'd forget that it was covered in glue. So I had uh, serious diarrhoea for three days. <laughs> <laughs> so let's award some points. OK. In last place, Sean, because unfortunately Sean used real hair. One point to Sean, uh, yeah. then obviously lip hook shit. That's, uh, <laughs> gets two points, it doesn't deserve them. Two points Th to Ian. Three points, just because it didn't look like a moustache from a distance. Although I quite like the multiple moustaches. Joe. Oh. Uh, four points, because, you know, it's just horrible, <laughs> twisted monster. Which one? Uh, Lou. Okay. Um, <laughs> and five points, obviously I'm going to give it to the Caviar King, Paul, Paul Sinha. Sinha. So what's that done to the scores, Alex? Well, I'm afraid Joe uh, is at the bottom of the leaderboard with four. Then we have Sean with six, Ian with six, Lou with seven, but Paul is the leader with nine points. Hooray! <laughs> right, next one then, please. Uh, oh, and look, it's rice time. Is it rice o'clock? It's rice already. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hi there, Lou. Hi, Alex. Hello, Joe. OK, well, OK. Enjoy the eyebrows. Well, you know, what do you expect? Oh, you've been shopping? I have, yes. OK, get this rice. Oh, I, lo I, love, a, um, I love food. Get this rice into the bottle in the living room. 
You may only use the shopping basket and its contents to transport and deliver the rice. You may not touch the rice with anything other than the shopping basket and its contents. You may not take the bottle out of the living room. Most grains in the bottle wins. You have 10 minutes. Your time starts now. Right. <laughs> OK. Very good. Sounds pretty straightforward. Transport the rice without touching the rice. Yes. Very nice. That's it. There's 21,000 grains of rice, same as the population of the Orkney Islands. So if you imagine you're trying to yeah, get yeah. all the inhabitants off the Orkney Islands, yeah. you can only use stuff that's washed up on the, on the beach. Right. Uh, there's been a problem, the island's got too hot. Am I popping them in a bottle? I'm putting them in a bottle. Yeah, you've got to get them onto a bottle on the mainland. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Who's first? Uh, we're going to look at two of my top five contestants this year. It's Sean Gibson and Joe Thomas. Lovely. So that goes in the... In the... Right, I've got an idea. Hold on. <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> that doesn't work. So I've got a bit of tape. I mean, that's... Right. <laughs> right, I've got another one, I've got another one. OK. <laughs> um... There must be some... Can I get tools from anywhere else, or...? Does it, does it say you can't? It doesn't... Uh... Where's the... Where is it? Do you know, like, if you... You can siphon water by sucking and blowing okay. through a pipe. Does my mouth count if my mouth touches rice? Um, I think so. Oh, shit. <laughs> OK. That's not... Ah, it's mango, isn't it? That's different. Different to... <laughs> it's different to a bowl. I, um... Right. Okay, that's a little bit of rice. So here we go. Okay, where's this jar? Oh, I think I've got this now. One more trip. So sorry, someone's gonna have to get the Hoover out. What would you do with the breadsticks? <laughs> There's a bit of rice in that bowl. You didn't say in. There's some on. On, OK. On the bucket. <laughs> OK, well, thank you, Sean. I'm going to count the grains of rice. <laughs> bye bye, Sean. Uh, certainly some bad news for the residents of the Orkney Isles, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sean, we all know that if you suck water through a hose... I, I don't know what the scientific reason for the water will keep flowing on its own. I think it's Do just you... lucky. It's just lucky. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, I mean, did you really think you could get the same effect with rice? <laughs> yes. If you suck a bit of rice, the rest will follow. <laughs> <laughs> it's madness. <laughs> We can safely say I failed that, didn't we? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> well, Sean transported 28% of, of the grains of rice. Joe, did you save some Orkney Islanders? <laughs> oh, my God, yeah, I wouldn't let those, those guys down. <laughs> he, <laughs> he saved 18,000 Orkney Islanders. 85%. No. Yeah. Of the island? Of the <laughs> island. Wow. Pretty good. <laughs> so, Greg, can we move on? Yeah. It's probably worth remembering the very clear and simple rules. Yeah. Number one, you may not touch the rice with anything other than the shopping basket and its contents. One. And number two, you may not take the bottle out of the living room. Otherwise, you just go and get the bottle, scoop up the rice in any old thing and put it in the bottle. Yes, and that wouldn't really be a task, would it? That would just be you putting some rice in a bottle. <laughs> Who's next? It's Paul. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> D 
didn't go so well. I think there might be a more practical way of doing this. Well, that's not as hollow as I was hoping, I'll be honest with you. Let me get something to the bowl. It's always a bloody trick in the question, isn't it? Nowhere did it say you couldn't bring the bottle in here. You may not take the bottle out of the living room. Thank you, Paul. Didn't do too badly this time. It's a very rare treat on a television programme to see someone lose their job on a different television. <laughs> 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 it's the end of part two. Not long now until someone wins, lose, slip on boobs, and Shirley Bassey's pop socks. Exciting! Now, fan me! <laughs> Master, it is the start of part three. Oh, it really is, isn't it? Mm. The current task involves using mangoes, breadsticks, honey, a comb, straws, a pumice stone, sticky tape, blue tack, or a balloon to transport as much rice as possible into a bottle in another room. We've seen Joe and Sean do that, and Paul do something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it's Lou, which is short for Lou Sanders and Ian Sterling. <laughs> the main thing is just not to panic and just to do this logically. <laughs> I mean, not touch the rice with anything other than the shopping basket and its contents. <laughs> um. Right. Yeah? That's a carry pot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm out of ideas. <laughs> Not touching. Is this timed? Yes, you've got six minutes left. Right. In she goes. I've had a bit of an idea. Ain't that sticky, in it? How many minutes left? Three minutes and 50 seconds. Easy, baby. We are flying. Come on, boy. You are genius, Stella. Look at that steady flow. <laughs> Quite pleased with that, actually. When I first uh, saw Lou's elasto glove system, <laughs> I thought that Sean was off the hook. <laughs> And yet, incredible. Incredible from both of them, really. Mm, she cleaned the jar. That's the key. That's yeah. the key. A woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A better woman. <laughs> I mean, I was just genuinely impressed. Yeah. Her plan was to empty the honey into a bowl so that other people could eat it, which is very nice, whereas Ian instantly <laughs> straight on the floor. Ch chucked it out. But he, was, he wanted to save people. I don't like food waste. No. I don't like people <laughs> in the Orkney Islands dying. <laughs> Lou saved all, I would say, all the men and all the women and just left the children. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy-nine per cent. So, the points-wise, Paul, either one or zero, he, he broke the rules. No points. No points to Paul. I'm uh, not complaining whatsoever. <laughs> Utterly no, of course, you're a reasonable man. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> let's give Paul a one. Let's give him a bonus point. <laughs> Sean, two points for saving 28%. Ian Happy saved 74%, gets three points. Lou saved 79%, gets four points. But Joe is the winner, saving 85% of them, getting wow. five points. <laughs> Wow! 
Another one, please. Good idea. And it's team time! <sighs> Oh, hello, Sean. Hello, Paul. Good morning, Alex. Please don't touch that just yet. Ah. <laughs> Good Lord. Ah. <laughs> you got my order. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> treasure chest. Go on, sorry. Nothing. Hiya. Oh, sorry. Why, uh, interrupting. Oh, hello. Hello, hi. 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 All right. Hi. Oh, you've got a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. Hello. I have. How are you doing? Oh, Thanks, yeah, I'm right, yeah, yeah. That's too nice. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, you can open the task. Okay. okay. Right. Tell your teammates what is in this chest. Your teammate must not see what is in the chest. After reading the task out, you may not speak again until the task is over. In the first minute, you may only use facial expressions. In the second minute, you may only make noises. In the third minute, you may only shout adjectives. <laughs> From then on, you may only whisper verbs. Fastest correct communication wins. Your time starts. Are you ready? I'm ready. Now. Just a weird guy. <laughs> Just a weird guy. I mean, I was, I was initially going to focus on y your meeting being the most <laughs> awkward. <laughs> and then, can we show his face again? <laughs> I mean, that to me is the face of someone who's watching a human transform into a lizard or something. <laughs> Get it. What were you doing? <laughs> you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait and see. It's the other team first, I'm afraid. Oh, God. OK. It's the fun guys. It's That's Ian, the... Lou and Paul. It's just facial expressions, please. Uh, um, we can't see your facial... Superman. Um, the sun. Uh, the sun. It's like the sun. Uh... A torch. Your faces seem very the uh... same. Um, oh, oh, morning. Morning. Uh, Staring. Focus. Sunshine. Glasses. It's something to do with like. Glasses. Oh, the view. The view. The view. A uh, picture of the view. Um, <laughs> hope. Just noises now, please. Poor noises. Mm, 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 mm. A gag. Mm. A ball gag. Kill. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Sunrise, sunset. Mm. Sunrise, sunset. It's a just, bit like sunrise, noises, sunset. Please. Just noises. The moon mm. comes. No more just. Any no other just. noises apart from. Mm. Um, daybreak hormones. What is a hormone? <laughs> Please shout some adjectives. Uh, directional. Oh. Compass. Yes. Well done. Stop the clock. Well done, team. I was pointing at that thing on the wall, looking at that thing oh. on the wall. Oh. <laughs> A few guesses. Yeah, interesting. So, um, Paul was allowed initially to use only facial expressions, mm. but he opted for one facial expression. <laughs> <laughs> That's my acting range, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> and then you were allowed to use only use noises, and you opted for... Mm? <laughs> <laughs> Some of Lou's suggestions for what was in the box are interesting. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> She also said the moon cup. A moon cup? You know what a moon cup is? Uh, a special time of month, it collects um, your menstrual blood. Menstrual fluid. And it's very economical for the environment. And she thought we'd put it wallet. in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> your menstrual moon cup. <laughs> mm, mm, menstrual moon cup. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see the other team. OK, well, they... <clears throat> Got two minutes and four seconds. Here come the actors, Joe and Sean. Okay. Oh. Slowly looking around. Up. Uh, is it is it to do with tennis? Oh, what is it? Forehead. <laughs> <laughs> you think of the forehead in the chest? 
well, I... Is it, is it to do with the face? You may now make noises. I'm terribly Just sorry, noises, that, was, that was awful for me. Um. Just noises. I wish I knew what that was. Mm. Mm. Up. Mm. Up, down, mm. left, right. Mm. Um, just mm. noises. Compass? <laughs> it's compass. <laughs> ah. <laughs> that is... Woo! I mean... You I tell sure. you what, I tell you what. Well done. <laughs> You use the same noise system as Paul, interestingly. <laughs> <laughs> Not opening your mouth at all. <laughs> it's the universal noise for compass. Okay, here we go. Sean and Joe can have three points. Uh, Louis and Paul can have two points each. There we go. go. Sean and Joe. Well done. What do the current scores look like? Well, you won't believe it. It's very surprising. <laughs> there are only two points separating first and last. Shut up. Lose and lead with 13. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. OK, here comes a massive splurge of adverts. Sorry about that. But wake up now! We're back on. <laughs> What's next, Alex? Well, it's a task, and it's this task. Hello, mate. Oh, hello, Lou. Please stand this side of the rope. So. Fuck it. I'm... Oh. Travel the furthest distance while making a constant noise with your mouth. You must start travelling in 30 seconds from now. So it's going to be a constant noise? Yeah, I'm going to re release you... Oh, OK. ..in 25 seconds I'm now. a bit out of breath, you see. Any sort of noise with your mouth? Not one breath. I can just make different breaths. Some, well, as long as it's constant, as long as the noise doesn't... Oh, that sounds like a gap between them. Oh. Furthest goes fastest, yeah? Do you know what I mean? You think the faster you go, the further you go? Yeah. OK. That's true, isn't it? OK. You're going to be coming through here. That's true, isn't it? I'm going to release you in 15 seconds. Can you just tell me that's true? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> OK. Uh, just briefly, why were you out of breath before you did the task? <laughs> <laughs> the walk. Across the field. I just walked across the field. <laughs> <laughs> and I genuinely started reading the task going, well, how have I got out of breath? I need to reassess everything. Oh, li listen, I mean, it's almost certainly an underlying heart problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, good. <laughs> Here are Paul Sinar and Ian Sterling, together forever. I've never done this before. Have you not? <laughs> OK, well, here we go. Good luck. Off you go. Uh... <laughs> oh, we stopped. I got tired. Well, did it, so I, I got tired as well. Where did he stop? Here. On my trousers. Got it on your leg. <laughs> yeah. You took a breath right at the... Uh, did I? ..the flag. Yeah, why did you do that? Run so out, I ran out of breath. Ran out of breath, so you needed to breathe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A very poor vital capacity. You know what? Yes. No, I saw that. Oh, well, thank you. Bye. But I'm going to have to rewind that. <laughs> Uh, very poor vital capacity. Yeah. But how lovely to see one of the deleted scenes from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. 
played out for eight seconds. <laughs> um, Ian, you know, pretty funky attempt, but that was not a continuous sound. It w yeah. But the, nope, it, it wasn't. It, the beat in between, if there was the beat. Oh, the silence between those beats. There wasn't any. If it was a beat, it sounded to me like you were saying butter gather over it. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying boots and cats. Boots and cats. That's how you do beatboxing. Is it? Boots and cats. 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 Then you got re rewind. Ah, oh, that's so good. Mm. There's no gaps in it though. Oh, there's def there's definitely gaps. <laughs> yeah, I've represented it as a waveform. Oh, of course you have. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's always going. No, those little bits are just atmospheric noise, I'm afraid. But, you know, even though you're not going to get any points, I mean, remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? It's the noisy athletes, Lou, Joe and Sean. OK. Three, two, one. There. Yeah. Was it constant? Yeah. <laughs> have you just stopped, have you? Yeah. No brakes? No. <laughs> what an annoying noise, really, from a nice girl. Mm. <laughs> oh. It's honestly. Dehumanising. <laughs> Bloody hell. Again, you confound me. Like, you know, you just look like you're having a lovely time, just running in the wind, shouting, <laughs> yeah. and then you end it with a phrase that I would expect <laughs> to read in a novel about Russian gula. <laughs> <laughs> It's not supposed to be dehumanising. <laughs> it's just a bit of fun. <laughs> and this is the second time that we've seen Sean clearly make a mistake and then say, no, I'm just carrying on anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start off uh, with Sean and Lou, who both ran uh, 38.1 metres and 39.9 metres by Lou, just ahead. Paul ran for 22 metres, that's one twenty thousandth of the Grand Canyon, and uh, 98 metres there for Joe, that's the length of Big Ben if it was on its side, and then finally Ian, uh, the noise stopped uh, <laughs> there, after one, <laughs> one metre there. So it goes one point to Ian, two points to Paul, three points to Sean, four points to Lou, five points to the howler, Mr Joe Thomas! <laughs> Lovely! <laughs> Fair choice, right. Up you go, right now, to the stage, for the final task of the show! <laughs> I'm very excited because I play an active part in this. Yes, you do. Perhaps you'd like to get someone to read out the task. I've popped it on Joe Thomas's table today. Well, let me, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Say a species of bird eat a grape then shout a competitor's name within five seconds of hearing your own name. <laughs> if you fail to say a different species of bird, pop a grape in your mouth and shout a competitor's name within five seconds of hearing your own name, you will be eliminated. You must not say any bird that has previously been said during the task. Last remaining player wins. What, what do we do with these? You must pop them on because that torch is blinding. <laughs> torch <laughs> <laughs> And I'm starting with Lou. Grouse. Paul. Swallow. Lou. Um, seagull. Ian. Falcon. <laughs> Jaw. Nightingale. Sean. Chaffinch. <laughs> Paul. Ptarmigan. Joe. Woodcock. <laughs> Ian. <laughs> Ballad <of> Lou. <laughs> Lou. Hen. Joe. 
Blackbird. Ian. Chicken. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. So a lot's gone on there. We had hen and chicken. Uh, and then uh, we had a balaflu. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, when I made that word up, I didn't think the game was going to continue. <laughs> Are we allowed chicken? Yeah. It's a different word. No, sorry, you're out. Uh, well, wait, but Balaflu was fine. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's play on, Alex. OK. Your name, please, Greg. Joe. Manx, Shearwater, Sean. Whoa. Paul, it's with you, sir. Penguin, Joe. Puffin, Paul. <laughs> Owl, Joe. Ah, <sighs> ah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> We've lost the bird expert. <laughs> wow. And I'm starting with you, Lou. So th this is the final. Yeah, Working. I know. Yeah. Chaffinch. Paul. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, wait stop. We've had Chaffinch. Lou's out. Paul is the winner. <laughs> Come down and let's see how that's affected the final score. <laughs> what was all that about, then? Well, it's a great game of... Third great torch. Really <laughs> good. Really good game. <laughs> Ian got one, Sean got two, Joe three, despite knowing birds like Manx Shearwater. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. That is weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Lou came second, Paul Sinar won five points. Hey! <laughs> Retaining his job after the rice fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> and it's close at the top of the leaderboard. Oh, my God. Joe Thomas on 20, but the winner of this episode is Lou Sanders with 21 Yay! points! <laughs> Lou Sanders has won. Please go up and pair up. Thank you. So, what have we learned today? We've learned that if you find yourself on the quiz, the chase, facing the cinnamon, don't panic. He can only go for eight seconds. <laughs> We've also learned that Lou Sanders won the show. So very well done to her. Farewell, night night, Lou Sanders. <laughs>